Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Fallout 4 is not a small game by any means. And it in fact may be just a little bit deeper than you might have realized. And even two years later, many of the game's easter eggs, references, and hidden secrets may have slipped by some of us. So today we'll be taking a look at yet another 10 tiny details you may still have missed in Fallout 4. Part 3! Starting off, Nick Valentine is everyone's favorite trench coat wearing synth. Lead detective in Diamond City, until meeting you, he spends his days investigating various peoples and crimes, solving mysteries and bringing those deserving to justice. Well, it turns out, before you met him, Nick Valentine may have in fact been looking into a very familiar potential friend of yours. Underneath a bed inside the Valentine Detective Agency building, the player can find a case file titled Mysterious Stranger. In it, Nick has written a variety of notes regarding a strange man in a duster who has been spotted shooting people and disappearing all across the wasteland for decades. Of course, most players will recognize this elusive mysterious stranger as the same one who assists you in VATS should the sole survivor have the appropriate perk. It's good to know that we're not the only one this fedora-bearing man has baffled. Next on our list, Coursers are elite synths, built by the Institute for the specific purpose of being pure killing machines. Designed with super strength, awareness, and endurance, synth coursers prove themselves to be extremely dangerous foes or exceptionally helpful allies, depending on which faction you've sided with. Well, should you be powerful enough to defeat one in combat, and if you remove their clothes and look closely at the back of their necks, you'll find that all coursers have a binary sequence printed on them that's rather difficult to notice if you're not paying attention. When translated into ASC2, the sequence simply spells out the word synth. Some folks have pointed out that this seems to be a clever reference by Bethesda to the Hitman franchise, where clones have a numerical sequence and barcode printed on the backs of their necks. If anyone spots a Corsair named 47, you know what to do. Coming in at number 3, upon the player's first visit to Diamond City, largest city in the Commonwealth, you'll watch as its massive mechanized gate is opened before you. After this moment, the gate will never move again, and it remains open for the rest of the game. However, did you know that the sole survivor actually has the ability to close it? Should you get on top of the gate, either thanks to some clever jumping or a jetpack power armor modification, and look at its yellow bars, you'll be given the option to open and close it, however you please. Now, it's rather buggy to say the least, as oftentimes the doors will be unresponsive, so it seems Bethesda didn't really expect for players to do this. But no matter, an interesting piece of trivia nonetheless. For a fourth spot, whenever you approach an NPC in the game and press the interact button, the player's character will usually say something along the lines of hello or hey. But if you are intoxicated, which can easily be done through means I probably don't have to describe, the way you address other characters will become noticeably more slurred and less articulate, if you will. See if you can notice the difference for yourself. John. I think... <clears throat> hey, Polly. Want your meat slice then? Hello. Hey. Hello. Hey there. Hello. Halfway through at number 5, when writing dialogue for Codsworth, the oh-so-lovable Mr. Handy Robot you meet early in-game, Bethesda did something funny. You see, depending on what you named your character, there's a good chance Codsworth will address you by and actually verbally say your name in dialogue. So, if you named your character John, for instance, Codsworth would later say, Hello, Mr. John. Or if your name is Bob, you get the idea. Mr. Bob. Mr. John. Bethesda accomplished this by having Codsworth's voice actor literally record saying hundreds of common names, and then appropriately interjected that into dialogue. Now, obviously, the poor voice actor couldn't say every name in existence, so if your character's name is something particularly unique, like, I don't know, Augustus Snuggleton or something, then Codsworth will simply address you as Sir or Ma'am. Well, it would appear despite Codsworth's limited database of names, Bethesda decided to also include some rather humorous profanity. Take a listen. Mr. Space, Sean has been changed absolutely refuses to calm down. Sixth, north of Molden Middle School lies a strange sight. A toy car crashed into a tree with a Jangles the Moon Monkey doll inside. Nearby is a dead glowing one ghoul with green blood splattered all over the place. What's happened here? Who killed this ghoul? 
Glowing ones are fairly powerful enemies. Whatever took this fellow down had to be a pretty tough creature for themselves. Well, if you simply choose to walk away, you'll never find out, and it will remain a mystery. However, should the player walk up to the Jangles the Moon Monkey doll in the toy car and take it for themselves, a super mutant behemoth will spawn nearby and rush the player. Evidently, he doesn't want to share his toys. While a pretty funny easter egg in its own right, this whole event is actually a reference to a similar encounter in Fallout 3, where the lone wanderer could find some teddy bears in cages amongst the wreckage of a train and upon taking the bears, a super mutant behemoth would spawn in and attack. So my advice is, whatever you do, be suspicious of any stray dolls you find when roaming the wastes of Fallout 76 this November. Coming in at 7, the Radiant Quest, Quarter Mastery, can be given to players who have sided with the Brotherhood of Steel. In it, Scribe Halen will ask the player to visit a random location, clear it of enemies, and locate one of three pieces of technology. Well, one of those pieces is called a Flux Sensor, and before returning it to the scribe, should you look on its back, you'll find an odd series of numbers and letters, perhaps relating to a serial number. CMB 88B 1809 This is a reference to the movie Alien, in fact, where the central vessel the film takes place on, the Nostromo, has a model type of CMB 88B, and has the registration number 1809-24609. Perhaps we should look into where this item came from. Next on our list, in the ruins of the Commonwealth Institute of Technology, within the Rotunda, you can find the skeleton of a janitor, sitting in front of a chalkboard with a strange pair of drawings written onto it. Chances are you might already be catching on to this one, but it is a very blatant reference to the 1997 film Good Will Hunting, where the lead protagonist is a janitor at MIT, the school CIT is based on who secretly solves a similar looking math problem on a professor's chalkboard. Unfortunately, it looks like this version of Matt Damon wasn't so lucky. Getting close to the end here at number 9, Strong is probably among the most humorous companions in the game. Being a super mutant, his perspective on life and its challenges is certainly a very unique one to say the least. Well, if Piper is your current companion and you decide to swipe her out with Strong, they may have the following conversation. Strong, go with human. Yes, come with me. Strong, travel with human. Jeez, you mutants are not much prettier up close. Strong say same about little lady. While this certainly isn't the only case of Strong being savage, I wanted to include at least one example in this video. And finally, last on our list, our number 10 spot will be taking us to the island of Far Harbor. Being an island, it's, well, it's surrounded by water. And if you decide to swim far enough to the southeast, near where I am on the map, you'll eventually be greeted by an invisible wall, telling you that you can't go any further. However, just underneath the water, past that invisible wall, is a pretty cool discovery, as there you can find a crashed vertebrate, a couple of skeletons, as well as a set of power armor and some stim packs and ammunition lying on the ocean floor. Now, being across that barrier, all these goodies are unobtainable by the player without the use of console commands. Inaccessible gear, but a nice little touch by Bethesda nonetheless. And with that, we are going to wrap up. Yet another 10 tiny details you may still have missed in Fallout 4. Which of the ones featured on this list did you find to be your personal favorite? And what hidden little easter eggs and secrets do you know of that I haven't covered yet in the game? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everybody.